Hi, I am Maker Giovanni and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'll show you how to convert a battery powered Christmas lights to work with a USB charger and this simple modification can save you hundreds of euros. For some years now battery powered Christmas lights have been everywhere and the idea seems great, we can put them wherever we want without the need for cables and extension cords and having a very simple electronic circuit they are also cheaper, or at least they seem to be. The problem is that after just a few hours the batteries run out, turning into e-waste that is harmful to the environment and expensive for us, so much so that you can end up spending hundreds of euros on batteries. In today's video I'll show you a very simple way to modify battery powered Christmas lights to work from a USB port, like the one of an old cell phone charger. This is because we often have an electrical outlet near where we place our lights, so why use batteries when we can use mains power at a much lower cost? If we don't have a nearby outlet we can still use a USB power bank, which allows us to place our lights wherever we want, and when it discharges we can simply recharge it from a USB port. Many of you however have asked me the opposite, which is how to convert lights that need the mains power to run on batteries. In today's video I tried to do this too, and I must say that powering all kinds of lights using just a power bank is really convenient. But now let's get started! This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you want to turn your breadboard circuits into professional PCBs then GLC PCB is the way to go. GLC PCB is a company that manufactures high quality circuit boards starting at as little as $2 and in just 24 hours. Placing an order is very simple, just upload the Gerber files and select the different parameters to get an instant quote and proceed with the purchase. GLC PCB also offers an assembly service that mounts the components on the PCB for you, so that you receive it assembled and ready to use in your projects the right away. Right now GLC PCB is running Black Friday discounts, so click the link in the video description to get up to $650 in coupons. Let's start with this string of Christmas lights that runs on two AA batteries. The ultimate goal is to power them from a USB port, but getting there wasn't as easy as it sounds. First of all the lights are made up of 10 LEDs, that are powered by two AA batteries. If we look inside the battery compartment we can see that the two batteries are connected in series by the terminals at the bottom, while the two terminals at the top are where the lights take power from. Measuring with the multimeter we see that the batteries generate a voltage of about 3 volts, with the positive pole on the flat terminal and the negative pole on the spring terminal. I did a first test by setting the bench power supply to 3 volts and connecting it to the two terminals. 3, 2, 1 and the lights come on without any problems, so we can go on with the project. To power the lights from a USB power supply we need a USB cable. After cutting it we can see that it only has two wires inside, which carry the positive and negative. Some cables also have other conductors that carry data, but we don't need those. Measuring with the multimeter we see that the USB port provides 5 volts. However our lights operate at 3 volts, so connecting them directly would result in breaking them. So we need to lower the voltage from 5 to 3 volts, and the easiest way to do this as many of you have suggested is with a resistor. To calculate it we measure the current drawn by the lights at 3 volts, which in this case is about 80 milliamps, and then use this formula to find the value of the resistor that we need, which in this case is about 25 ohms. To make it I used a 47 and 100 ohm resistors in parallel, which I soldered to the positive terminal of the battery holder. Then I connected the USB cable between the negative terminal of the battery holder and the other end of the resistor. We connect the USB cable to a power supply and see that the lights turn on without any problems, and by measuring the voltage they receive after the resistor with a multimeter we actually get 3 volts. After a few minutes however the resistor starts to heat up. 
because all the energy it takes to go from 5 volts to 3 volts is lost as heat. What's more, when the lights are turned off, the voltage after the resistor goes back to 5 volts. And this sudden change can destroy the circuit that many lights have to generate those nice light effects. One positive thing is that a resistor costs almost nothing, but perhaps there is a more efficient and safer solution. This is a step-down voltage regulator, which can lower the voltage with an efficiency of over 90%. The one I chose for this project is very compact, and has a fixed output voltage of 3 volts. There are three terminals on the board, the positive input, the common ground and positive output. I solder the positive and negative ends of the USB cable to the two input terminals, and measuring the output voltage we have 3 volts, exactly what we needed to power our lights. To connect the voltage regulator to the lights, I first solder two cables to the two terminals of the battery holder. The negative goes to the common ground, while the positive goes to the output of the voltage regulator. Before testing the lights, I made a hole for the USB cable, and put the voltage regulator inside the battery holder. At this point we can connect the lights to a USB charger, and as before they work just fine. However, now the voltage supplied to the lights is stable at 3 volts, so the electronics will be safe. One very useful thing is that we can also operate the lights using a power bank, even if, wait a minute, why have they already turned off? The reason is the power bank itself, which turns off the USB output if the load we connect is below a certain threshold. This makes the battery last longer when we are not using it, but it also creates a big problem for any project that draws a little current. Luckily there is a solution, and I discovered it by chance while working on my last project, using a USB-C power bank and a trigger board like this one. After connecting it to the power bank we see that even with a very small load the output remains on indefinitely, or at least until the battery has charged left. This happens because I'm using a power bank with power delivery technology, which allows us to get different voltages on a USB-C port, from the classic 5V up to a max of 20V. However, what we care about is something else. To obtain these voltages we need a trigger board like this one, which has an IC on it that tells the power supply what voltage we need. As long as the trigger board is connected, the power bank remains active, even with a very small load such as our lights. After making some space, I glued the trigger board into the battery compartment, also creating a hole for the USB-C port. By pressing the button I set it to 5 volts, and with two cables I connected the output to the voltage regulator that powers the lights, following this wiring diagram. After closing it up, all that remains to do is one last test. The lights work great, both with a normal USB-C power supply and using the power bank. All this works great for lights that only require two AA batteries, but what about the lights that have three batteries? Actually, here everything is simpler. Three AA batteries in series produce a voltage of about 4.5 volts, which is very close to the 5 volts we have on a USB port. The first thing we might think of is to connect the positive and negative of the USB cable directly to the two terminals of the battery holder. We plug it in and... Joking aside, everything works just fine, but the lights receive a higher voltage than what they are designed for, and as a result the LEDs will break sooner. To solve this problem we just need to use a diode. This component creates a voltage drop of about 0.7 volts, giving the light a voltage very close to 4.5 volts. In a diode the current flows towards the part with the white stripe, which I solder to the positive terminal of the battery holder. At the input of the diode I solder the positive of the USB cable, while the negative goes directly to the negative terminal of the battery holder. As before, I made a hole to pass the USB cable through, and we can close the battery compartment. One last test and the lights work great, and measuring the voltage they receive we have about 4.5 volts. 
As before, I tried connecting the lights to a power bank, and this time the problem of the power bank turning off after a few minutes did not occur. That's because these lights draw more current than the others, so the power bank stays active even without using the trigger board connected to the USB-C port. At this point, however, I asked myself, what if we have lights with a mains voltage plug? Can they also work from a USB port and therefore with a power bank? The answer is yes, although it is not always possible. The lights I want to modify are these. They are 25 meters long and operate from mains voltage. Obviously, generating 230 volts AC from a USB port would be practically impossible, and for this reason this modification cannot be done with lights that operate directly from mains voltage. However, like most lights, these actually have a power supply that brings the mains voltage down to a lower voltage, in this case 30 volts DC. By cutting the cable of the lights we can measure a voltage of about 31 volts, going from the power supply to the lights. So we simply need to bring the 5 volts from the USB port to the 30 volts required by the lights. For doing that we need a step-up converter, which is capable of raising the voltage to almost 40 volts. Again I cut a USB cable, which I connected to the input terminals of the voltage regulator. I connected the multimeter to the output, and after plugging in power adjusted the voltage using the potentiometer until I reached 31 volts. At this point I could connect the lights to the output of the voltage regulator, being very careful not to reverse the positive and negative wires going to the lights. Now all I had to do was to connect the USB cable to a power bank, and our lights turn on without any problems. Powering lights like these which would normally require a power outlet using a power bank is really useful because we can put them wherever we want and when the battery is low we can simply recharge it from a USB port. And so that's it for this video, and as always I hope you found it useful. If you're into electronics don't forget to check out my channel, and maybe subscribe. Bye and see you in the next video.